such horrid dreams. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. Hmm. As I suspected, I must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. I must say I'm relieved. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. Good morning, Miss Bateman. Good day, Stanley. Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Not really. I have the rather queer recollection of a cat entering my room last night. A cat, you say? Yes, an odd-looking grey one. I must have been dreaming as I locked the door and windows before I went to sleep. I saw a similar cat in the lavatories while searching for Mr. Tillett. Ah, Herbert. Oh, he's a harmless thing. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. Indeed. Seeing him in the lavatories must have conjured up the strange dream. The mind is capable of manifesting frightful things, Miss Bateman. I'm happy to report the rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Crisp. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving today? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. What does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any such bulky items. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bateman. That's not what I... Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Miss Bateman? Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. And, well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of, too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. Why lie to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. Where is Hobbs Barrow? I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. Hmm. I now find that hard to believe. The moors are vast, lass. I tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. 
Certainly not in the village itself. Might someone around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. It seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly tale attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Hello. My name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. What do you do around here? Hey up. You're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard. Dig the graves. Ha! What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows then? Don't concern yourself. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around here, love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. Goodbye. ta -ra. A storeroom of some kind. It's rather empty. Hello? Y yes My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, I do. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You must have come on the train! I love watching all the steam puff up into the sky! Have you been on the train yourself? <sighs> no, miss. Our parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Bewley. Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. No, I need to stay and protect Bewley from the Lambton Worm. What is the Lambton Worm? It's going to come back and get us all. John Lambton thought he killed it in the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The Lambton Worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true. I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children often do at his age. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas, this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Have you heard of Hobbs Barrow? What's that? A local burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Good day. Hello, miss. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Betty. Nice to meet you, Betty. What are you up to? My brother is practicing his sword-fighting technique. 
and to watch him until he tires himself out. I'm tireless! This time last month it were all about his teaspoon collection. This month it's swords. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. Are you sure? Yes. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? Yes. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Good day. Yes? Mr. Crozier, I presume. Hi, George Crozier, at your service. My name is Thomasina. Hi, can I help you? Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? Aye, born and bred. That's where my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You'll let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, aye. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Do you know of a local landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. What have you heard? Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, they'll be nought to interest a young lady. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved Juliet. In memory of William Ager, in memory of Peter Black. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. In memory of Millicent Smith. In memory of George Paxton. In memory of Barnaby Tillett. In memory of Percival Roach. In memory of Romeo in memory of Henry Crozier. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? Yes, I'd like to buy a cake. Wonderful. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Curses. I have no more money. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry. I, I can't give them away for free. 
The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? This is De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> what would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find better in the entire county. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. He might be able to help you. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. Where can I find Father Roach again? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you, Mrs. De Plancy. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Goodness me, look at these box pews. I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. Hmm. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. Locked. Locked as well. I think they all might be. It's locked. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. 
I need your help, young lady. Tell me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. Excuse me? Call me. I beg you. Ouch! The broken lens is extremely sharp. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, Father. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry, that's all. I like to pick blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. Are you from Bewley originally? I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew. One could say that you were born into your role, Father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. St. Edmund's is a fine building. Thank you for saying so. It's hard work keeping her in good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What is it like being the vicar here? Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register? No need. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you aided me so. Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. What can you tell me about Bewley? It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I can't say I've heard of it. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Good 
morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors, and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? Uh... Richard the Second. Correct. You are well read, Miss Bateman. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favorite pastimes. Follow me. Behold, the vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst, ma'am. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you.
What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmund's? Not regularly, if at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? A sturdy construction I'm in, no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. At least he must have plenty of eggs to eat. Awful creatures, those hens. Do you know that young girl we saw? No, but I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. Good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there are others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. I wouldn't entrust a young woman in their company. Hmm. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. The devil mustn't have been happy. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like hens, father? I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hen's eggs. They smell of sulphur when rotten. What more can you tell me of these primitive folk? Godless people, Miss Bateman. Don't concern yourself with them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. You mentioned that Mrs. De Plancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. De Plancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. What is your favourite of Shakespeare's works? A very difficult question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? A fine quote.
Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Romeo and Juliet. A fine tragedy. But that particular passage is from the great Othello. One out of two, Miss Bateman. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. No sign of life? None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. The window is much too high up to reach. Here, chuk chuk chuk. Don't encourage them. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Why didn't he come inside to see me? Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to at the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? No. You go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. I should go and meet him at the station. Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is. Or was? Where is Kenneth?
He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plow and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night... What were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. If you say so, perhaps I am mistaken. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. Hmm. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I... I don't remember out. Hmm. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around my skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. Well, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I No sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? 
He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the store. You'll see it. Thank you. Farewell for now. Tara. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what, thankfully. No one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. Tis no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You pay in? Uh, no. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Ah. Goodbye. Ta-ra, lass. Hmm. No one here. I don't think anyone is home. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbour. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. 
I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye. Funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No. Not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for a nail right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait. Do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tab? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. Royal Mail, Postmaster's Residence. This must be the local post office. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. The man is standing right there. The postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. I don't think anyone is home. <sighs> Hello. I really must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found digging around in those things. Goodbye. Dara. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. 
now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye, it's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. I found Mr. Shoulders home, thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful. So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, did old Leonard apologise for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr. Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the Barrow? No, sorry. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him, just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of value as a deposit. I'll give it back to you at the end of your stay, when it will be time to pay the piper. How can I... Leave me... I'll give it when it will... Goodbye. See you soon. Good day, sir. I must say... I've stored my case in the... A box within a box. I've hung my... Aside from that, I don't wish to... Ca I've too much to do. I don't wish to take it. The candle has perhaps Mr. Kemp jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. I don't want to take the painting with me. I suspect the barrels are empty, otherwise the locals would be rolling them into their cellars. I'd rather not go into those horrible toilets again. Good day. Hello, miss. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hello? E yes? Are you sh- Not like a wheelbarrow? Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. <sighs> I don't think anyone is home. Good day. Yes? Are you sure? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. The blacksmith is... Hello. Good day. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. Father Roach seems rather under the weather, don't you think? Father Roach? The man is as fit as a lad half his age. What makes you say that? I found him in the woods in a state of considerable distress. Oh my! This is very worrying. I must check on him later. I had no idea. Hmm. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs? What? Never mind. Thank you for your... Lord be... No time. It's locked.
I have no desire to go rooting about in there. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. I can't see how... I shall see you later this evening, gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Hello, sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. Wait! Some nerve. Lady, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Let me pass. Not today, by order of Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. There's nout even down there. You're not going to let me pass, are you? Now she gets it. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. These are his woods. Aye, his lordship owns most of the land round Beoli. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Beaulieu? Aye, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions. Or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. If you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. I'll let him get on with his work. I'll let him get on with his work. Lass, as I told you, there's no way down the path today. I have no... The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. They aren't mine to take. They aren't mine to... Hey! Stay away from that! It's bad luck to touch the Yemen's horn! I'm serious! Uh, fine. The water is icy cold. Good day, little one. What's your name? Wally took Myrtle. Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes. My favourite. Mummy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. I'm sorry to hear that. What is your name, little one? Jane. It's a pleasure to meet you, Jane. My name is Thomasina. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. 
It's good for drinking and cleaning. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Tell me more about the Ammon's horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. What god? Ammon, of course. How wonderful! I'll be sure not to touch it. I wouldn't want to anger the gods. Sensible. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favourite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes! But don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Please find Myrtle first. I miss her. I will. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Where do you live? Our home is up. Maybe what? Or maybe poor Myrtle. I'm going to... Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hey! Stay! It's bad. I'm sick. Uh... I don't think anyone is home. Why are you knocking on me bleeding door? Come right here, you tough bugger. Oh, apologies. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Well... Oh. Wait. I don't have any money. Well, I'm not buying you a drink. Please? You must think I'm daft. Can I buy you... Well... Oh, I don't... Well... Please? You... Goodbye. ta -ra. It's locked. Hello. Good day. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Why do he have other what kind that he any good group yet? <laughs> I forgive not a thank you, Lord.
I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. The moors... Here lies Elizabeth Farnaby. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. Today, she dances with angels. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. I may be a barrow digger, but I am no grave robber. This appears to be a re... There may be a ba... What a peculiar... I can't quite... way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. Mr. Shoulder continues to prove himself elusive. No sign of any movement. I don't think anyone is home. Oh. Hmm, no one here. I don't think anyone is home. Good day. Yes? Tell me of Lord Panswick. His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Heavens no. Villagers aren't allowed there. Why not? Dunno. It's just the way it is. Hmm. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hello? E yes What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweet floods. My friend says that Lord Panswick has special oh. trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. You think that's true, miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship, then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he is a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Good grief! But is this true? 
Well, I won't be the one to find out. Farewell for now. Tara. If I take... My mother always told me not to walk on railway tracks. Good day to you, sir. I'll do. Goodbye. Tarala. The cross denotes this as the site of a market, or perhaps a site of traditional religious significance. The door has been boarded up. The building looks like a ruin. Hello. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Now to say, except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. Goodbye. ta -ra. Good day, sir. I must say. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. Goodbye. See you soon. Thing. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. I'd better not touch them. They could... think of anything else to talk about right now. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Goodbye. Bye, Miss. I'll let him get on with it. There's nothing else. I'll let him get.
Hello there. My name's Thomasina. Yeah? What's yours? Wally. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't know what she can be like. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the Fair Folk. That'll teach her. Who are the Fair Folk? The little people of the Moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them Fair Folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny bells. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells. You'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that door back. That'll just bring bad luck for all of us. What do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No, he lives out on the moors somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why's that? Because he has a lot of money. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. Goodbye. Nobody home. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? Not right now, Mr. Kemp. As you were. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. Hello, fairies. Hello, fairies. Josephine, I won't let the foxes eat you.
Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's the gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? This must be Jane's ragdoll. Hmm. You're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! Come back! It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. Jane? Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> Jane! 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 Jane, come out this instant! I can't see a Damned thing in here. I need a light source. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Go on, then, lass. Follow me.
So then he turns around and says, Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, Because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, ah, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> Thanks again for the ale, lass. Now leave me be. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Picks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. I don't wish to... I can't pry the fossil from the rock with my bare hands. Thank you. 
Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. Same lantern. Aye, so we do. That's a peculiar idea. That's a peculiar. What do you make of this ammonite? Now then, tis a beauty that it looks familiar. Hmm. Alas, it is not mine to take. No, that won't... Hmm. Good day. Yes? I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I... I collect them. This one is called an... Ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I. Well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How oh. much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade? Surprise me. Thanks for- Aye. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Right, let's put this lantern to good use. Jane, come out at once. Badger's Hole. You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help.
As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. I have no desire to wander the furrows. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard, he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like... That must have been hard. He lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him. Hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers round here raise livestock. Even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. My wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. 
You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. As you wish. Good. You've come to your senses. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? Thanks for your time. Tehran. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Lennon making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this, but yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road, once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra, set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. Probably should have brought my umbrella. A R. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? Smell earthy and sweet. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting. I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck. Thank you, Daddy. Now I'm ready. No 
treasures here. Nothing here. Treasure! Look! Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. I do have a feeling there is some... I must gain Mr. Bryden... Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. I shouldn't disturb him at... This is not mine. I don't wish to risk waking it up. Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman. There are stories connected to that place. Yes, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. A mug of your finest ale, please. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Goodbye. See you soon. I don't wish to wake him up. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. He seems even more wound up than usual. I can't think of any... Good evening, Mr. C evening. Thanks again for the fossil. That is truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the Barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. 
bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you gonna do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming! I am gonna knock his bloody block off! <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off! You heard the man. Charming. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Can I buy you a drink? One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. To Leonard's shoulder. Wherever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sights steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. Used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favourite lookout spot on the moors. 
Margaret's lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him. And I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right then. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! Thomasina. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? We were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. One more thing. This is not a dream. <laughs> 